in our supportive care unit and, and within our team, we kind of have a motto um, that you get one chance to um, help a person pass on to the next next transition in their in their world. And so I think um, if I can help that patient pass to the next world with dignity and with grace and with um, love and support, um, then I feel like my calling is to do that and to really bond with those patients and their families during one of the most difficult times in their lives um, and, and help them transition as easily as possible. And so I feel like I practice palliative medicine to, to allow my patients to transition into that, that next realm um, as easily as possible and with as much dignity as, as possible and with as much quality um, that they can, they can have. The one thing that I would encourage other healthcare providers to do more of is to listen. Um, I practiced internal medicine for many years and ran a very busy practice for my supervising physician. Um, and so I think that developing my listening skills was very difficult to do whenever you have such a large load. Um, and so, but I think it's very important that we stop and we sit down and listen to what the patient has to tell you. Ask questions and don't be afraid of that silence that might occur um, while, while they're trying to formulate their answers. Listen to them, listen to their goals, listen to their wants, listen to their needs. Um, and sometimes that's, that's hard to do when people get so busy and so involved in um, just the medical world that we live in with as much advanced care that we do. So I think my biggest thing would be listen to your patients, listen to their wants um, and what they need. We have been consulted on, on very difficult ca cases where patients or their families have said, hey, we don't want to continue this really aggressive management. We really want to change direction and just fo focus on being comfortable and, and focus on, on letting my loved one be comfortable for whatever time they may have left. Um, and so sometimes our our goals um, as medical professionals get in the way of the patient's goals because we try really hard to, to keep the patient alive and we want them to survive. But we have to remember, what are they surviving to? What is going to be meaningful recovery to them and for them? Um, and so sometimes it's, it's difficult to, to listen and really hear them or their families, because sometimes it's their families say, hey, we, we realize that you have invested all of this effort into this really difficult case, but we're really ready to make them comfortable. And so sometimes that's, that's hard to listen to and that's hard to hear because you as a medical professional don't want to, um, you don't want to think that you failed a patient. You don't want to think that you've invested all of this effort and time into helping this patient survive, you know, and then their family is turning around and saying, well, we just really want to make them comfortable at this point in time. We think that they've they've suffered enough and so I think sometimes that's that's difficult for medical professionals to hear. As a speech pathologist, um, good listening, I think you guys are great at, at listening most of the time. Um, listening to your patients and, and listening to their food preferences or um, to suggestions from the family regarding certain certain things and, and that are important to them in their in their everyday life before before the hospital. Um, listening to their um, concerns and their fears because the patients themselves may be scared of aspirating and so I think that you guys can can help listen and then help to educate the patient on safe ways to feed themselves you can educate the family um, and and caregivers about safe ways to feed the patients um, so that you can help kind of reduce some of that fear in the hospital, the nurse obviously is going to spend the very most time with the patient, um, more so than anybody from from other, you know, the team or um, they're at the bedside the most often. And so I think that um, they really often get a better picture. And so they do a good job of listening to the patients and the families most of the time. Um, I think they can pick up on small nuances that 
maybe somebody else who's just, you know, going in on daily rounds, um, the patient may have said something, but it, maybe, maybe we interpreted it a little bit differently. But over the course of the day, maybe the patient has said something several times to that nurse. And so she can really take that and then elaborate on that when there aren't a bunch of white coats standing in the room listening to, you know, listening to the patient talk. Whenever it's just one on one with the patient and the nurse, and the nurse can kind of say, okay, tell, you said this, so tell me what you mean. And then I feel like the nurse can, can bring that back to the team or to the provider and say, hey, this is what I'm hearing the patient say. And, and really kind of close that loop um, of communication. When working in palliative medicine, you're speaking to health professionals involved with these types of patients. How would you finish this sentence? Please don't do blank. Mm. And it could be multiple things. Please don't force aggressive medical management on your patients. Mm. 